But on a bitterly cold January day, it was devastated by an explosion that killed several of the people who lived here and changed the lives of others completely. The whole central section of this block of flats was instantly demolished. They managed to put the buildings back together again quickly enough. It wasn't quite so simple for some of the people inside who survived. Tonight, we show what happened to an extraordinary woman who was caught up in the events of that day and the strength, the courage and the skill of those who tried to help her. Qualities they found in themselves just when they needed them most. In recreating what happened, we've used BBC News pictures and fire brigade video shot on the day and talked to the people involved. But the drama of that day happened away from the cameras, under a teetering mass of rubble. There, we've used an actor and an actress to reconstruct what happened. Seven o'clock on Thursday, the 10th of January. Today's newsreader is Brian Martin. For Eva and Karen Krecci, who were born in Czechoslovakia, a normal working day, starting with breakfast together in the flat that they share. The caretaker, Dutchie Gellison, comes on duty at 6 a.m., but he usually waits until just after 7 before taking the morning mail to the people living in the flats. The smell of gas is very strong this morning. Terrible, that. I should have been up the stairs and opened the windows and doors up. Yes, we've opened ours. I was going to phone the gas board later. Would you phone them as well? I go in the office now. Oh, thank you, Dutchie. I'll bye see bye. you later. Bye. Dutchie never made the call. Ava didn't get to work. It's now 7.14 and her world is about to be blown apart. News is coming in that six flats have collapsed in southwest London after an explosion and 16 people are feared trapped. They've gone in the middle and that is the bedroom area. So obviously the time of the morning, sometime after seven o'clock, you can guess who's in the bed. Scotland Yard says it's believed an explosion was caused by gas. And we heard a few minutes ago that several people are said to have been killed. Well, I couldn't have expected anybody to survive. It was such total devastation. Nothing could prepare you really for, uh, for the site of the building itself. The whole centre section of the block of flats had collapsed into a huge pile. The desperate search for survivors goes on all morning. They bring in a thermal imaging camera to try to detect body heat under the rubble. Two hours after the explosion, eight people are still unaccounted for, including Eva and her sister. They'd almost given up hope of finding anyone still alive when suddenly everyone went quiet. We believe we've heard sounds of knocking from under the debris on the far side. We've got a small crew now working inside below that slab using uh, one of our thermal imaging cameras to try and detect the body under the piles of rubble. Of, of rubble. I think that's a bath, that. Well, a bath on top of a bath. Well, it's yeah, come it's down too full, yeah, yeah. She was, in fact, in the bathroom, and the roof section had collapsed onto the bar, which had protected her. And this small void was where the main part of her body was, but her leg was badly crushed. So we had to find a different access point. And in doing so, we started the, a tunnel, or to tunnel towards the casualty and the sound of the tapping. All the time, there was a possibility in disturbing one side that this would cause a further collapse. So it was a case of working slowly and very carefully in concert with all the crews that were there. And by that time, we'd established a conversation with the casualty. Eve, what's your second name? Sorry? All right, Eve, we'll be with you in a minute. Don't worry, love, we're coming. Nearly through to you, all right? Yes. All right, we'll be with you. All right, I've got a hand, John. I've got a hand. Where does it hurt, Eva? Nowhere. I feel nothing. You can't feel anything at all? No. All right. 
Now, don't worry. There's a lot of people out here working as hard as they can to get you out. Thank you. All right, we've got to look at this and move a few more things around. Now, I'll be back. The man who made that vital first contact with Ava was the fireman, Peter Simpson. Actually managing to make physical contact with her was really good. Then, once we discovered how bad her injuries were, particularly the crush injury to her leg, um, then we became concerned. Six hours after the explosion, and there's another problem. A large overhang of masonry is teetering directly over where Ever is trapped. It could collapse at any moment. If it does, it will kill her and her rescuers. Right, what we're doing, we're, we're working as fast as we can, Eva. Um, I've got to move some of the rubble that's around you before we can get you out. And I've got to, I've got to support the ceiling above you as well, because at the moment it's, um, it's a little bit unstable, so I want to jack that up before we start moving you, OK? Yes. <laughs> Is Karen all right, my sister? Um, obviously, I'm not too sure of all the details of what's happening out there, but everything's being done that, that can be done. Tell her I'm all right. You tell her? Yep, OK. Don't worry, but we're, we're doing everything we can for you. She certainly was alive, but they weren't sure what her state was. And they asked me to go down to try and make some initial assessment to see whether, she, whether she'd even survive uh, any further um, uh, masonry removal. Eva? Yes? I'm a doctor. I'm here to help. The rubble could have uh, collapsed. The bar over her could have given way. Uh, and rather than collapse on her, could have collapsed on myself. But one doesn't really think about their own uh, uh, safety in those situations. The whole adrenaline is uh, is turned on and you address the problem in hand which was saving the, the the girl in the rubble my back is hurting can you feel this no can you wiggle your toes i can't do anything much i feel very cold i was actually quite concerned because she had suffered a severe injury to the knee of one of her legs and there wasn't the enough room for us to turn her and pull her out by the arms. So the only way that we could remove her from this okay, tight area yeah. was to pull her out by the legs. We're nearly ready to bring you out now. Okay, be patient. It won't be very much longer. The big decision came in concert with the doctor to actually remove her. Now, only one person could work down the tunnel at any, any given time. So we were going to have to bring her out feet first. The only way we could bring her out feet first was by dragging her by her legs. 2.15 p.m., seven hours after the explosion, and Eva is finally freed from the rubble. She still doesn't know that her sister has died. Okay. Oh, damn. That's it. Oh, I remember the daylight. It was like the best thing I had seen. I came out and I felt you know obviously being claustrophobic it was like to to feel the fresh air and you know to see the sky and that it felt like being reborn really the success is down to team efforts although there was four of us who worked on the physical rescue of this one at all times there was 50 or 60 other firefighters out there working with us Eva spent seven months in hospital and underwent over 40 operations. She'll never forget every moment of those seven hours she was trapped. There was absolutely, there was total silence. I didn't hear a sound after that uh, initial sort of uh, explosion, that, that noise I heard. And there was nothing much really I could do except waiting to be rescued. But once you hear voices and you think, you know, that I hope that it will turn out all right, because you feel close to safety but you could be such a long way away really i tried to move my my left hand and i i sort of felt something like a, a smooth surface and I, I tried to knock on it i also remember hearing uh, somebody saying oh we might as well take her leg off because she won't be able to use it anymore and that scared that scared me a lot because i thought you know if if they amputated without me having any sort of say, I mean, I, I just thought, I hope they give me the, cho the choice. It's a situation that one doesn't run across every single day. 
and Eva was a, a very important person in as much as I, I admired her for her bravery. I haven't seen her much since, but I was delighted to be invited to her wedding subsequent to that. Uh, and I'm glad to say she still has both her legs. My relationship with Dr. Barry Powell, even though I don't see him anymore, you know, I mean, he, uh, he is, I have, my, my sort of belief in people really has been restored in a way because of, of people like him and my husband and, you know, the fire, you know, the ambulance men, the, you know, the, these people, I, I can't, I can't. Country road, but nonetheless.